What's going on guys, it's DJ Rick Webb and we're back at it again. Today we're doing a school dance sort of thing. We're at Salt Factory, which is a non-profit facility. They help out all the local area schools and we're doing a dance that's free for all of the kids that come here. It is December 22nd, as you guys see on the screen. Right here is Zach Anderson, I actually went to school with him. He is the one that runs the Salt Factory now. So Zach, you wanna tell him a little bit about what the Salt Factory is, what they do? Yeah, so right now what we do is we offer a cool place for kids to come and hang out. Uh, safe environment, positive role models. We'll help kids with their homework. We have tutor tutoring available. Uh, we always have a meal each night for the kids too, so nobody leaves hungry. So that's pretty much what we're doing right now. And as you guys see around me, it does look a little dated. Um, that's because this place is a very old facility. Zach just inherited this facility. Yeah. So he's working on upgrading and stuff, and that's kind of what this whole entire night is supposed to be. It's like a kickoff. Just a good place for uh, kids, a safe environment like Zach said. I'm gonna get started setting up. I brought a pretty decent amount of equipment to get this place kicking. And uh, this place is actually pretty big. There's there's more space down that way. Uh, we're gonna have a fun time tonight. It's 7.30 to 10. You you got food for the kids too, didn't yeah. you? Pizza, tacos, Kennedy tacos. Bakery, Thomas Pizza. Tacos. Taco Ooh. Bell, yeah. <laughs> All righty guys, we're gonna get started on setup and uh, I'll check back in. Okay guys, this is probably gonna be one of the first gig logs of 2019 and I kinda wanted to do something different. For the gig logs, I normally just time lapse and set up. So I'm gonna try and actually show you guys a little bit more of the detail side of the uh, set up and I'm just trying to do a little bit of a change with the gig logs trying to do something new a little bit different um, So I'm gonna slowly guys. I'm gonna set up some stuff Explain it set up some stuff again and then explain it again first off I want to explain my like overall vision for the setup I got basically a blank canvas to work with and I brought two speakers one sub That's all I can fit in the truck and I got four movers. I got wash FX's and I got the big T-bars. So I'm gonna basically make a symmetrical setup over on this wall, and uh, we're gonna go from there. Okay, so first step when I'm setting up is lining up symmetry with tripods and my table, basically. So in this room, we got the cross member up top, and I want my setup to be right in the middle, so it looks like I'm gonna go a little bit that way. And then I wanna line my tripods up, staggered correctly on either side, and I could just do it by eye, or I could also actually like kinda walk it out. So we're gonna put the speakers, in the corners, I'm gonna corner load the one VRX 918 sub, and then the two tall T-bars are gonna have four movers and wash effects. Also, this is the ADJ event table two. It splits in half right here. You basically just slide the two sides together. And then there are these cross members that just kind of pop in here. So these Velcro straps right here are for me to mount a par. So I just Velcro strap the bottom of the par, it holds there and shines on the sign, which is right here. Now this sign is my custom made sign. I had a local vinyl shop make it. Quarter inch plexiglass, I've explained it before. Uh, and then I have Velcro on these sides right here. And the Velcro sticks to all the Velcro on these sides. So I can just pop it in right here. But uh, that's all it is, you just pop it in there pull it out, separate it, and that's all there is to it. And then the tabletop just pops on top of it. And there you go, there is the event table. And there's a nice slot right there to run your cables down through. And then you can take your cables and you can run them across and hook them over top of these. And you can also tape them along the sides to make it clean, easy to set up. Surprisingly, it's pretty easy to keep wires clean. That's what I do, guys. I make sure I have symmetry before I start loading up my tripods with equipment. So once I got symmetry, tree, I'm gonna start putting the speakers up, start putting the lighting on the T-bars, etc. So this is a question I get a lot, is how do I get my SRX 815s? These are 63, I think, pound speakers. Um, probably some of the heavy speakers you guys probably ever deal with. Um, how do I get them up on top of my tripods? Luckily, my tripods are hydraulic, so luckily it's not hard to raise them up. So just kind of wanted to show you guys my technique. Is I lean the speaker to the side, I grab the side handle, I lift up, squatting, lift up to my shoulder waist, and then the next thing I'm going to do is rotate it up onto my shoulder. So I'm going to swing it up, and rotate it up onto my shoulder, and then I use my other hand to feel where the hole's at, and I put it onto the pole. And then now I can just raise it up. Easily, as soon as I release some hydraulics, just barely lift it. Good to go. Quickly guys, just wanted to show you guys my Atomix bags from Ariba Case. Check this out, they're on wheels. You can wheel these in and out of venues. The second bag on top hooks onto this bag, so you got both bags. In my garage video, you guys saw the first bag. In the second bag, 
This is where I got two of the InnoSpot Pros, and then I have another Reeb bag over there with the other two InnoSpot Pros. So we got all four of them here today. I don't make any money off of this, but if you guys want to save some money on Reeb case bags, if you use promo code DJ Rick Webb, you'll save yourself 20%. Check them out. Alrighty guys, progress. Got the T-bars, speakers up, T-bars up. Let me walk you guys through the T-bars. First off, these T-bars have angle uh, braces on either side, which basically allow me to put heavy movers like the Unispot Pros on. So these are the Odyssey LTP2 stands. They also go 12 feet in the air, but you have to manually raise them, which kind of sucks. But we got two ADJ Unispot Pros, one Chavette Wash FX2. I have one power strip coming up here with three outlets, which power all three of the movers. I also have a donor wireless DMX and I plug it in because I have an outlet here on the back of the Wash FX. I go ahead and plug it in just for the heck of it. So I have IECs, all of them are taped white which basically means they're less than uh, three feet which is perfect because they're just long enough to reach over to here. Uh, I kind of try and tuck the cables around here. There's not really going to be much light so when you're close up it does look kind of shoddy but uh, when you raise this up in the air and it's uh, 12 feet above everyone no one will really notice that. That is the setup for these right here. Looks pretty cool, looks pretty dope. Just one cable comes down the T-bar, which is our power. Pretty easy to keep it nice, clean, and hidden. Uh, we are not gonna be using scrims on anything, actually. We're gonna keep it no scrim for this event. Main reason for no scrim is I'm trying to create like a dark club style atmosphere, and uh, when you do the scrims and you uplight the scrims, um, provides a lot of ambient lighting and that's not what I'm going for. I'm going for dark with a bunch of beams from the movers going everywhere. We will be using haze, and then the wash effects are basically gonna be like our crowd blinders slash like effect light. So that's what I'm going for in terms of a lighting concept. Now that the lighting is hooked up, I'm gonna go ahead and set up my ADJ event table with my Pro X DJ coffin, which has the custom build and everything. You guys will see it here in a bit. But I'll check back in after that. All right, so making progress. Got the SZ case up here. Uh, the laptop stand built into the SZ. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I have a whole video series, three parts, on how I made this case with the drive rack below, the SZ, the wireless mics, the ports on the back of it. Check it out. Rocking the event table shelf. This is where my laptop for the Show Express is gonna go. Show Express box is right here with the donor wireless DMX as always. Got a mega tripod plus down here that's gonna be lighting up the FSL sign. Wires run down across onto the side, down to where my Furman power strip's gonna be and run off the side and down it out to the speakers. One of the main comments on my latest power video, you guys can go check that out. It'll help explain what I'm about to talk about. I didn't talk about how you determine what circuits each thing is on. So there's a lot of ways you can do it. There's actually a tool you can buy that you can plug into the circuit and then go over to the breaker box and determine what circuits on there. I do it kind of a different way. Most of the venues I go into have pretty well labeled circuit boxes and normally the venue managers, the janitors, know exactly what outlets are on what circuits and in some gyms and some of the newer places labeled. This place is one of those that's not really well labeled so what I do is, remember when I said I buy extension cords that light up? I have four of those and I plug them into different outlets that I want to get power off of. So I plug two in over there, one over there and one back here. And then I go through the breaker box and shut off different breakers that say that it is a series of outlets. I'm able to determine basically by which one's shut off, which outlets are on which circuit. So these two outlets back here are one circuit, that's another circuit, and then I got another circuit in the back. I don't necessarily need three circuits here, but um, I'm gonna use three circuits because I have three circuits. It's always better to use more circuits and put less load on each circuit than to use, like say, two circuits and load those up to like 15 amps a piece on these 20 amp breakers. So I'm not trying to do that, so that's why we're doing that. Anyways, more cabling. Ran the cables over, up the speaker, use the Velcro ties to hold the cables onto it. Guys, if you run cables up your speaker stands, I highly recommend that you don't wrap them around the speaker stands unless you're doing scrims. It's not good for your cables to put that much of a strain in terms of wrapping them around there. They'll tend to coil and crinkle. We talked about that in cables of how to wrap your cables. The same sort of thing happens if you wrap them around a speaker stand. So just run them clean along the back, tape them so that when you look at it from the front, the pole lines up with the cable. I'm now at the point where I need to finish setting up power and turn on everything. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next and I'll check back in when we get there. 12 seconds later. 
All right, so did a quick sound check. Rattled a lot of things off the ceiling from this old building. We're uh, pushing around 105 in front and pushing about 100 to 98 dB towards the back. So that's like 100, 100 feet away. And uh, back here at the back at like 75 feet away, you're at this uh, makeshift wall. We're pushing somewhere around uh, 100 to 98 dB. As you can see, I got a little bit of haze in the room right now. Uh, gonna put the lighting up, plug it in, and uh, get the DMX going, and then we should be good to go. A few moments later. Well guys, just wanted to update you that I have the lights up in the air, as you guys can see behind me, and it looks pretty sweet. So we got the four EJ in a spot pros rocking, two wash effects twos. That is at 25% brightness right now. This is kind of more or less what the, just the beams look, look, look like. Of course we do have lights on back here that are gonna be shut off, but you wanna talk about some cool lighting effects? Holy crap, that looks awesome. There's a cool one for you. Alrighty guys, so in terms of what I'm doing, I'm gonna turn the lights back on, and I'm basically gonna clean up and tape down some cables, and then I'm gonna get out of here. I hope you guys enjoyed me going a little bit more detailed on the setup versus what I normally do. So now, like I said, I'm gonna do that. I will show you guys my last sound check before we get out of here and, one, and a few little B-roll clips. And then yeah, I'm gonna be out of here. Alrighty guys, all set up. This is what the lighting looks like with no light in here. Um, please note that that flickering you guys see on the wash effects is, that's purely from uh, film. It looks like that on film. In person, it looks clean, looks even. And the lighting looks better because it's not as washed out with that. That's what we're rocking with guys. Looks pretty dope. So we're gonna do one more sound check with uh, all the light lighting going at full capacity to make sure we don't blow any breakers. And uh, then I'll be out of here. Alrighty, that was an extensive sound check, um, but I finally got it dialed into where I like it. For sound check, it's all by ear, man. That's how that's how I do it. I sit there with a graphic EQ and I mess around with it, and I listen and I, I see what sounds best. I see what sounds good. Normally, I play an EDM track so I can get my bass dialed in and my mids, and then I always play something with vocals because uh, I find when I EQ with an EDM track that doesn't have vocals, uh, which is what I normally use, something that's high bass and stuff, I normally sometimes mess up how the vocals sound, the way I EQ the EDM sound. So uh, I always play a vocal. It's just something I need to learn to train my ear better. Um, but I'm gonna shoot some B-roll and get out of here. Eventually. Yo, what's up guys? We're back at Salt Factory, all set up, all ready to go. Let me take you guys on a quick equipment tour before we get all this started here. We got like half an hour until we get started. Got all the Santa figured out and stuff. Oh, Ohio State, yes, I know, Ohio State, that's, I'm in Ohio, man. JBL VRX 918 SP corner loaded into the corner to get the maximum amount out of the one sub that I could bring. JBL SRX 815Ps, we got two of those up on top of Rockville hydraulic speaker stands. Electrical, all of our electrical cables are 12 gauge extension cords. These ones are the light up ones, linked in the description down below. XLR cables are all Hosa Edge. So we got the Odyssey LTP2 12 foot high T-bars. Not sure how high we are, we're very high up there. Two ADJ InnoSpot Pros, one Wash FX, two from Chave, donor wireless DMX. I showed you guys that earlier. Down below we do have the American DJ haze generator. In the center, we have the ADJ event facade, or event table too, sorry. Then we have my Pro X DJ coffin. There's a whole series on this thing. DDJ SC from Pioneer. Event shelf on the side here with the Chavez Show Express laptop. This is an HP Spectra X360 13 inch. And this is an HP Spectra X360 15 inch. This is the generation two, that's generation one. This one's a monster. That one's just the stock off the shelf one. Shave Show Express down below here. My uh, Vmoto LP2 headphones with the custom nameplates. Got some Bang, Bang Energy Drink. DBX Drive Rack PA2, ADJ Mega Tripod Plus, another donor, wireless DMX. Uh, this is a cable to charge my phone off of. Furman Power Strip, Jetpack Custom Backpack. But yeah guys, that's everything. So uh, we're gonna get things going here. It should be interesting, should be lit. We should have a good time.
Let's go. A few moments later. We are starting teardown. I'm not really sure my uh, SD card filled up at some point. I'm not sure what footage I got. Pretty lit though. Uh, M Michael came. We're gonna tear down, get all of it out of here, load it up, and I'll check back in with you guys whenever I go to edit this video. But it was lit. It was awesome. They had like a hundred and something people come, which was pretty pretty good for this uh, this size venue. Good turnout. Good turnout. Especially on the the Saturday before Christmas.